It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here. We'll address the cracking Surface screens, more Surface Duo rumors. Windows 10 2004 is done, and a whole lot more. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Windows Weekly comes to you from the Twit LastPass Studios, securing every access point. Doesn't have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, episode 661, recorded Wednesday, February 26th, 2020. Tastes like wine. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Worldwide Technology. Worldwide Technology's Advanced Technology Center is like no other testing and research lab. With more than half a billion dollars of equipment, including OEMs like Dell EMC, and it's virtual, so you can access it 24-7. To learn more and get insights into all that the ATC offers, go to www.t.com slash twit. And by FreshBooks, the easy-to-use accounting software designed specifically with you in mind, the small business owner. Try it free for 30 days at freshbooks.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Windows. None of us are infected, so you can safely listen to this podcast without a mask on. I don't know. I might have it. Squirt oh, us boy. Purell. It's okay, Mary Jo. I'm coming to New York tomorrow, so you'll have it I soon, I know. Too. I'm a little worried about that. <laughs> the city of San Francisco just declared an emergency. Oh, good. Yeah. Is it a homeless emergency? Or no, I wish. No, it's a coronavirus emergency. Uh, yeah. Even though I don't think we have any... Cases. cases. There's some in San Jose, I think. And then we're going, of course, because uh, the big RSA conference is going on today in San Francisco, oh, right. home of the coronavirus emergency. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to go to a big party to, tonight with uh, at the Last Pass party at uh, Bourbon and Branch with all the folks attending RSA. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, brought with me. Sponsored by a company from China, hopefully. No. <laughs> Last pass. Thank God they're they're in Boston. <laughs> yes, but I have brought my. Uh, there you go. Oh, you have mask. one. Mm -hmm. So you're ready. I don't know. It's really. Is it rude to go to a party with this on? I don't think so. No. Okay. Not good. if you're in Asia. Everyone wears them there, right? And people yeah, in Asia wear them there, so they don't get you sick. Well, <laughs> yep. and you know, I read a Often great uh, post. Uh, that said, you know, everybody should wear them so there's no stigma because, yeah, it is often assumed that if you're wearing a mask, you're sick. And in fact, nowadays, it's just as likely you're trying not to get sick. So if we all yep. wear them, then there will be no stigma and everybody <coughs> will feel You know, um, if you just didn't wear the mask, there'd be no stigma, too. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, but Save there might be death. <laughs> <laughs> well, then don't leave the house. I don't want to leave the house. <laughs> Honest, I don't. You know? I told my, uh, you know, I go to the gym every day and i told my trainer i said i may never come back i think it's i'm i'm gonna just work out at home and then oh and uh, i thought well yeah. you could say i'm positive i'm sick because of the gym you know the gym will always get you sick yeah that's the disgusting. place you think yeah. planes are bad oh, yeah. Into a gym. I know. Yeah. yeah now i presume your gym has a good policy of wiping stuff down after you use it and oh then... leo that's hilarious all you have to do is watch <laughs> the human beings walking around there not wiping anything down to understand yep. the I problem know. i know yep and we have, um, you know. Well, in New York, you get the subway poles and the oh subway Lord. stairs. Oh, <laughs> Lord. No. Right. The problem yeah. is I realized even if I wore gloves, I would still touch my face. So it really wouldn't be a mm -hmm. net zero. I don't know what to do. I yeah, just, we're all screwed. Yeah. This is, this is the future Bill I've, Burr envisioned. We're going to, half of us are going to be wiped on. out and there'll be no traffic. It'll be that's fine. A good, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bring Obviously. hand sanitizer everywhere. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. I'm wearing a mask. I'll get to attest to anyone because it's going to be random. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Middle Ages where you just never knew when a kid was yeah. born. In fact, they just didn't bother giving him names Black for death. years because why name a kid if you're just going to, he's going to kick. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. Don't get it. Don't get, it's like, you know, don't get too attached. Yeah. It's like <clears throat> farm animals. Ah. Know. Okay. Son, you have reached the age of 10. We can give you if a name If we're going to eat it, we don't give it a name. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, what a world, what a world. Meanwhile, in the better news, thank you, first of all, to Micah Sargent for once again filling in for me last mm-hmm. week. <laughs> did, it, <laughs> did, it all, <laughs> did he use his microphone? Did it all go that uh, yeah. well? <laughs> It went well, good. very well. He went through. He got through the show without cracking his Surface uh, laptop screen, so that was good. Yeah, yeah boy, I was That's... hearing about that. And Mary Jo, you got a little heat from the uh, people in the Twit community saying, "Oh, come on, Mary Jo, three people." But I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that on the show today. You, you handed out a lollipop mm-hmm. and said, "Just calm down." Yep. <laughs> Before we do that, let's talk about my favorite <laughs> subject. People were shocked, shocked. I tell you that I said I can't wait to see the duo and the Neo. Right. and uh, But I like this dual screen thing. I did cancel my Z Flip phone. <clears throat> oh, you did? Well, it was so delayed. And I don't know when I'll ever get it now. And I just see, thought, I think this first gen is going to be so unreliable. Yeah. I thought, why? T- you know, I was going to get it so I could review it. But by the, by the time I get yeah. it, nobody will care anyway. There'd be no point. Yeah. So, but I, I think I will get a duo. I think. So, what do mm. we. There's new. What is this peekaboo? <laughs> what is this of which you speak? S- so this is a feature Walking Cat found. Um, he's got a little video of it that I think we could play. Yeah, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no sound. This stuff, but there's no yep. sound. So uh, is this on his uh, a Twitter feed? Yeah, I think if you click yeah. that, it will do it. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So those are both. I think both of them are showing peak. Oh, so the idea is you just, you just, it's like, uh, like. Uh, Quick draw McGraw. Baba Louie, <laughs> you all right? Yeah. Saturday. It just little opens up just a little bit. Exactly. Hey, Duo, yep. what time awesome. is it? It's 8 o'clock. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the second one showing if you get a phone call. How, um, that would be. This reminds right. me of those kind of half gestures you have on Android where if you swipe all the way up, it will go to like the multitasking thing. But if you swipe halfway up, it does this other thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, or unless you just switch between the last two apps or whatever it is. Um, so it's, yeah, I don't know. Can I say I I'm again requires it. to. You, I'm again. what? I'm again it. You are. Uh, yeah. That means against it, Paul, for those of you who didn't grow up in West. I figured Sorry. that. I I'm haven't moved that far south yet. Um, <laughs> uh, only because that gesture of half opening the screen is, yeah. a, is a, a, I think, too much. Just too much. It requires two hands, for one thing. The one thing I liked about the Z Flip, I really liked, and I play, I did play with it a little bit, is this little screen on the front that just kind of yeah. tells you, and then you don't you don't have to do anything unless there's something to I do. I know. You know I this feel this like always they're the doing promise, it right. Yeah. Right. They're doing it to make it like you're you're not opening it up and being rude, but even if you open up halfway, it's still you can see someone's <laughs> peeking I mean, in there. I mean, come on. Like, it's like, worse. Like, like, I'm not I'm not paying attention. This no, is what, what, no, I, I, no. <laughs> it's worse. Like kind of a jerk. It's like obvious. <laughs> Plus, it's not. It's it's so far removed from that thing that really was truly great about Windows Phone, which was that at a glance right. notion that you could, yeah. in in the process of bringing it up, the screen would come to life. The live tiles have live information, and you could tell literally at a glance if you had to dive deeper, and if you didn't, you just could put it down again. You know, yeah. this one, I, I, it seems like there's a little more work involved. Yeah, mm. it's weird, kind of. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. So- I don't know. We, you we know, don't until know we have it, how do we, we don't know. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like it might come to the phone. It might not. It's this video, we don't know. Is it like showing you something that already exists and is definitely going to be in there? Is it a concept video? Who knows? Mm-hmm. Right? Who knows? A concept video. <laughs> concept video. <laughs> like, hey, we idea. could do this. Should we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, listen, minutes. when you have two screens, you're way more productive. So when you open it a little bit, you're just like kind of productive. One and a half, or one and a one. A little bit. <laughs> no, you know, you're a little you're, bit productive. You're point three so productive. Then, so then everybody also is looking at when you when he peeks in there. There's a date that shows up on the phone, right? Yeah. June eighteenth. Right. So mm-hmm. that of course set off a whole ton of speculation. Like, is that the date they're going to oh. announce the phone, or like oh. ship the phone, or whatever? No, but that's too soon, right? No. Right. I think that's too soon. And Rich Woods did a little digging from Neo Win and he's like six eighteen was when they introduced the I first. Mean, you don't have to do any digging. That's the date that's on every single one of their devices. It was the it's date of the original, original surface date. announcement. Oh. No, I forgot yeah. that. I, I, yeah, I, I remember too. I did too, but you don't have to like dig for it. It's no. like it's no, I, it's the image that's on every single Microsoft, <laughs> you know. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I, th- I couldn't remember what the significance was, though. I'm like, that's I know we've seen that date, yep. but what is that for? <laughs> so I didn't recognize it at first either. Um, but yeah. I, yeah, then my head, he was like, hey, this is just the, I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, should have should have remembered that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. yep. So, yeah, I think that would be too soon for them to introduce it anyway. I mean, they're, they're still calling it a holiday device. And I know there's been some speculation it could show up before November, December, but June would be really soon for that to show up right <laughs> here's i think that this is tied to the next version of android so oh, it would mm-hmm. yeah it would be weird for this thing to ship before then i, I will say that android this year is going to be yeah, finalized they, they earlier sh- than they ever shipped, they shipped it earlier they have already yeah so the they usually data. finalize it in august um okay. so given what they just did with the first developer preview it could be done as early as july mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we'll sit on it for four months, kind of like 2004. Um, well, I, I, I don't know if we'll sit on it, but I mean, most companies don't, you I know, know, they release devices months right later for sure. They don't usually Kidding. do it right away. Yeah. Kidding, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Google is looking for, you know, four more months of quality fixes before they ship it. Yeah, but, probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so this is exciting. I know. Yeah, we're going to see more little bits trickle out about these, the Duo and the Neo, right, as we get closer, yep. hopefully, to yep. those two things. <sighs> I don't know. I'm I'm really on the fence about the Duo, I have to say. I, I want to give Microsoft a chance with this thing, but after Windows Phone, I'm like, I don't know if I would trust them with a phone, even if it's an Android phone. I just... Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I... <laughs> I think we all need to acknowledge the temporary nature of this thing, right? That what we're really working toward are those folding displays. And, yeah. um, and you know, whatever. I mean, like, this is not the future, right? This is the, yeah. you know, the near-term future maybe for in the Microsoft world. But I, I don't think we, have we even, I guess we have. I guess LG has released a dual screen device. So I guess we've seen a few in the Android world, but it yeah. seems like the real excitement there is already on these first, second gen folding display devices instead. But you know what? I still wonder if Microsoft will keep championing dual screens instead of foldables, even if they do one, uh, because their whole Surface business is, is hinged on the hinge. Yeah. See what I did yeah. there? Yep. Um, yeah. That's where so, the you know what I mean? Been. You know what well, I mean, though, because they're they're yeah. that's their signature for Surface is the cool uh, way they've done hinges. Well, but there's still there's still a hinge, right, in a folding display yeah. device. So, yeah. in fact, Samsung uh, made a big deal about its hinge. It was very Microsofty. Yeah, yeah, not not the same though, is it? Well, it's cool. Well, I mean, I it's fair. The same we, means. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. We've, I mean, you kind of see the hinge more on a PC, yeah. obviously, on a. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, well, you know, don't, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. They do stick with things. <laughs> so they do. We're they all do. about the hinge. I yeah, know, they really are. That's true. They, yeah. do, they, they do like their hinges. You know what they used to be all about, too? Live tiles. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yep. Well, so it's funny because that just came up, right? So I mentioned how that was yeah. really neat in the kind of at-a-glance world of Windows Phone where you have like this single screen device. It's pocketable. It's something, you know, you bring it up like that. Um, and it, but live tiles did make sense in that system. There's no doubt about mm-hmm. it. Um, yep. Tive live tiles, Tive Lyles, um, <laughs> live tiles, <laughs> uh, live, live tiles never made sense on a PC. They just never did, and they've been trying and trying and trying. And you know, they tried to force them with that start screen experience in Windows 8, and of course with Windows 10. I think the default now for everybody is pretty much the a menu, and they just they, it's just not the same thing. If you have to bring up a screen, look at it. You know, go back to what you're doing. It's just not the same. It's just, mm. we just interact with PCs differently. So I think it's overdue. Yeah. Um, Talking about the rumor that they're going to, or is it, <laughs> right. a, is it a reality? They're going to kill live tiles in the Windows 10 menu. <laughs> I have been, I've just been saying this for years. They just don't make, it, it, they've never made sense right. on the PC. Um, I feel they, like the yeah. borrowed time. And there's been hints, right? That, that they're, even if they don't do away with tiles all the way, at least live tiles would be, out, right? <laughs> I would just get rid of the, the whole thing. I would, I, I would too. I would too. There is a rumor, um, courtesy of Windows Latest, that says they are likely to get, users are likely to get a new Windows 10 start menu without live tiles, meaning they're going to go to the 
exact look and feel of that UX from Windows 10X with all the icons, like the yeah. launcher, right? Right. I would That's like fine. that actually. Yep. I would, if that is true, and I don't, I haven't heard anybody prove that this is true or come up with sources who said I've got three sources saying this. I haven't seen that, it, but it yeah, makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Not that that ever means anything is happening, but no. It doesn't. Even <laughs> even before live tiles, and I don't remember when this debuted, the ability to pin applications to the taskbar, sorry, mm -hmm. um, really changed the way that I use Windows and launch applications that I use most often. So if you think about it before, you could pin things to the top of the start menu, you know, Windows 7 or Vista or whatever, or older versions. And so the, the things that you use the most would kind of be there. Microsoft tried to build some intelligence into the start menu so that as you used applications or launched applications, they would appear in that most recently used list. So they'd kind of always be at the top. Yeah. But just yeah. having them available on the screen kind of makes some sense. So yeah. the instances in which I have to go to the start menu to launch an app, and I'm not saying this is for everybody, but for me, is is rare. Mm -hmm. um, it do, it's not that it doesn't happen, but it happens so infrequently that when I do do it, I even more rarely would I, I actually look for the thing. I would just search. I would just start typing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so changing like the start menu, it's like, I mean, it mm -hmm. just doesn't, I don't know, I feel like we kind of, we're kind of past it in a way. You know, I, yeah. it, I don't think it's, I don't think it really matters all that much. I think the one thing I would like if they change it to these icons and the look of 10X would be the documents, your most recently accessed documents listed right there. In a very right. quick, and that's easy that fashion, office right? experience thing. Yeah, and yep. why not make that right? And and I, I wrote something I think last week about this: how the Windows 10X Start experience, whatever that's going to be called, the mm -hmm. launcher, is very much like the office experience because you get your apps yeah. and you get your most frequently or your most recently used documents, mm -hmm. and it becomes kind of the hub for productivity or whatever. Um, yeah. it totally makes sense that Microsoft would use that UI in mainstream Windows 10 versions. That's yep. It's you can look at the Office app today, or Office.com mm -hmm. or whatever to get an idea for what that can be like. I think it makes sense. Yeah, and and if for you know for enterprises, if you wanted to have your admin configure that front screen to have mm -hmm. certain selected apps that the company yeah. wants you to access, that makes a lot of sense too, right? Like a customized version for your company. It's um, something that should sync for you as an individual. If you yeah. decide, you know, I have, I, I use Word and OneNote and Photoshop mm -hmm. or whatever it is, it'd be neat if that list of most frequently used apps or whatever they mm -hmm. were, pinned apps, whatever, that should be something yeah. that syncs for people too. Mm -hmm. Like not just yeah. something enforced by businesses, but yep. yeah, so we'll see. But yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we always kiddingly and not kiddingly say it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So they aren't going to do it's it. It's never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously Windows Windows 10 will use live tiles forever. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah I, I would like to find some people who who are saying this more like in a way I, I feel more confident about than just somebody saying, hey, this is going to happen. I, I want more proof, I guess. That I think yeah. the existence of the Windows 10X launcher or start, whatever we're calling yeah. that thing is reason enough to believe this is going to happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it doesn't because, have uh, life tiles? No. 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 But it, it has all those icons, you know, arranged like in a grid pattern. Oh, interesting. Um, which is much better, I think. I think I don't so, know. too. <laughs> I, I always strip down my Windows menu, uh, yeah. delete all those tiles, so I just have the old style. Yeah. Start menu. Yeah, that's right. Really you know, right. I used to do that, and, and I think for a normal person, that's not a bad strategy. <laughs> The problem is I use so many different computers. It's just tedious to right. <laughs> to do that. Right. So I just don't even like if I open this thing here. It's on. It literally has whatever groups that Microsoft or whoever provided. It has like a productivity group and an explore I know, group. I hate and that. Yeah. It's, it's got like a Disney icon in there. I I never look at. It. I never see <laughs> right. it. I just look yeah. at it so right now. But because you never see it. Yeah. It just right. it doesn't. Matter. I yeah. uh, I want to write a PowerShell script that deletes it. I bet that I bet mm -hmm. you could do that with PowerShell. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it could be part of my setup. Yeah, scripts. like your startup tasks yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and finally, I guess we should update on that screen cracking thing. Um, yeah. What's <laughs> the? Rachel, why do you? Um, why do you? Why do you exaggerate? Yeah. I think is the question. My God, I know. Well, it was a few funny. Discontents Wait, so we... on Reddit, and all of a sudden, it's a problem. 
I yep. know. Now it's um, a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a little pushback on the Twit community about how, why did we lead with that story? And why did we think it was worth mentioning since we were pulling examples from Reddit? So since, since last week's episode, I've heard directly from several people who this has happened to them. They've sent me screenshots. I've seen them. This is um, you're, so, like the, this you're like the Alex Jones of the Windows community. <laughs> it's evidence of how different the Surface community is from, say, the iPhone. I mean, the yeah. iPhone bendy bend gate, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it was like every like alarms went off. Everybody and and it was people who were like kind of intentionally <laughs> bending their phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, Surface, it sounds feels like Surface owners really want to defend the Surface. Here's the, here, this is something I, I run like into that. this problem all yeah. the time. So if you think back to whatever year that was that Surface Gate happened, they had those huge reliability problems with Surface Book, the original version, Surface Pro 4. I would routinely hear from people who said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have this problem. Yes. As if, yeah, yes, Bob, thank you. We usually use you to gauge the reliability of a product. Well, as long you know, as it's like passes I, we, the Bob test. We, we get a lot of <laughs> feedback from people. So, like, you know, in, in the case of Surface, I, I did experience it on multiple machines. Well, you and I both but that's did. not why I wrote about it yeah. because right. I also understand that my experience is right. my experience. I mean, right. whatever. Yeah. We hear from a lot of people. Yeah. And we, in, in that case, there were news reports all over the place. There were massive Microsoft community Forum posts from people who were freaking out. Microsoft wasn't responding. They were talking yeah. about hard computer science problems. You know, mm -hmm. there were that was a, that was real. And yeah. so, I mean, at least give us uh, you know some iota of credit. Like we don't, you know, we're not here no, to. We're also not being alarmist, you know? right? No. Like when we said when we said this last week, we all, Paul and yeah. I both said at the time we haven't heard from almost anyone directly at this point, so we're right. not trying to blow this out of proportion, right? But here's, this is kind of telling. So one person who told me about this happening to them, he sent me the whole explanation of what happened, how Microsoft dealt with them, what he ended up doing, which was paying to get it fixed. Um, and then he said, $50. please do not use my information, right? Because I don't want this out there. And, and in some cases it's because people don't want to be, look like they're complaining, like they want to defend the surface community. Sometimes it's my company doesn't want me to say this because I don't mm -hmm. want any trouble with Microsoft, mm -hmm. right? Um, right, right? So Microsoft is taking this seriously. They are looking into it. I talked to them this week again about it and said, as soon as you have an update on what you're going to do about this, please let me know. And they said, of course. And so they have not yet come out with any definitive statement pro or anti about what they're going to do about this. I'll tell you what I did, though. I went out and bought a sleeve immediately for my Surface Laptop 3 because <laughs> I wasn't using you one. You think that'll protect it? I don't know. I haven't had any problems. Because we, we don't know what causes it. I mean, to me, no. reading between the lines, it looks like a manufacturing defect. Like, they, yes. like it's, it's, not some, it's not mishandling. The, the thing that someone needs to look at is how this device changed between the previous two gens yeah. and the current gen yeah. from a structural perspective. Right. Because right. my theory is that they... They made some changes probably to make it lighter mm -hmm. um, and took away the Alcantara, I mean, it, it, right? <laughs> they took it, which was the glue holding it together. No, I don't, you know, I don't. Um, Although yeah, I'll tell knows? you one other thing I learned is I talked to one person who had it happen with a 15 inch model. That's the first 15 inch okay. one uh, I've heard. Um, so, yeah. You don't really hear a lot about laptop displays cracking. Right. No, that's Especially unusual. Especially from someone who, I mean, you could step on it, I guess. But I mean, as, as no, far no. as, you know, but I opened if you the step on it, and you, it cracked you in my kinda, hand. You kind of knew that you stepped on it, right? Um, yes. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, I don't think this is that common. And it, sa it sounds an awful lot like a manufacturing defect. Like yes. there's yeah. something physically wrong with the way it's mounted or... Or the heat or something. something. That's some people's yeah. theory, like... Maybe it's because it gets hot and then the keyboard and the screen is resting right on the keyboard. There's no layer of prote uh, protection between them. I don't know. The, I mean, if you want to put a silver lining on this, uh, it's really great that the Surface owners are so tribal, you know? That I know. They, yeah. that, you know, they're, they're responding. I don't know. That, that kind of stuff can be dangerous, though. I, I, you, you, I, I'd rather people just be honest about what's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't I, I don't know. I, I can I can't speak to what it's like on the Apple side, but looking at it from the outside, <laughs> certainly yeah. have had their hardware reliability issues in various places and Apple does a lot of you know, two step to make it seem like it's just a small number of people. And, right. you know, 
I mean, I, I, Microsoft, like Apple, is never going to come out and say, yeah, I mean, we heard from like, it was like 10,000 people. It was crazy. Right. I mean, <laughs> they're always going to downplay it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Even if it, whether it warrants it or not. So I know. And this is also an the, issue where you have to be kind of careful, right? Like somebody can say to you, I baby my Surface laptop. I never would drop it or whatever. And mm -hmm. maybe they dropped it, right? Maybe they did. <laughs> and yeah, so I no, think they're trying that. to, right. They're trying to find yeah. proof that this is something that's not user error. And it's, the it's people just, I've talked to. It's an unusual I, problem. This it, it is. It's not it like is. people, look, we've had laptops for 30 years. We know yeah. not to open it this way because the screen cracks. That's never been a thing. No. So, uh, you know, this yeah. is the just people, a... The people who've documented it to me privately have said, um, yeah. I can tell you, this happened sometime between when I took it off my desk last night and put it back on my desk this morning and it was in a drawer. Like mm. I didn't take it with me or do anything with it. Like it just happened, right? Oh. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, that well, makes it more good. hard to trace. But so far, mine, I will say, no problems whatsoever, in spite of I Sriracha think, sleeping on it leprechauns. and jumping on it. <laughs> Look, um, what do you call those? Gremlins. Gremlins. Trolls. Hopping up and down on the screen Trolls. when it's in the drawer. <laughs> Trolls did it. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so that's, that's the latest. We don't have any new update from Microsoft, but... I can assure you people who might be doubtful about this happening that I, I feel strongly it is happening to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, Mary Jo, in keeping with everything that always happens to me in this world, I will just say it's time to shoot the messenger and it is it her is. fault. She is no, making I think this we should blame it's Paul a one person conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> I want to blame Paul yeah. for this somehow. I don't know how. I better right. come up with it. You know what it is? It's because people aren't using UWP apps because I crapped all over UWP. And those That's apps it. were lighter weight and they didn't uh, no. impact the screen as much as real apps. All right. Now we get the, we get mm. the reason. There That's we how science works, folks. <laughs> Before we uh, go on, do you want to say anything more about 10X or any or Neo or Duo or anything like that? Yeah. You know, one thing I did want to say, because I don't feel like we've talked about this enough uh, in regards to 10X. And it, the reason we haven't is because Microsoft has not talked about this as a Windows Core OS operating system. I don't think they've ever actually said those words, right? Have right. they said right. WCOS about this? No, right? But to me, you know, we're talking about the UI and peak and like, do, you know, is dual screen really more productive than single screen? But to me, the most interesting thing about these two devices is their Windows Core OS devices. Well, actually, the Duo is not since it's Android, but the Neo is. And the fact that it's a WCOS device is going to supposedly bring us a lot of capabilities that I care more about than I care about new icons and new layouts it's supposed to like let us do things like switch between apps way more seamlessly, get updates instantaneously in the background, like all these things they promised about Windows forever. You know, I'm, I'm tired of you not focusing on the superfluous stuff. I, I have to say. <laughs> I know, blue icon or green icon. I know, I know, and fluent. <laughs> but I yeah, just, I, I mean, want to see all that other stuff actually happen, better battery life if it really happens because of WCOS. Well, Updates yes, happening. I, the architectural yeah. changes are the big news here, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like there's a little bit of magician hand waving going on with the dual screen thing. Like they're, I, I, I'm still a little confused why they've tied it to that. Um, but I feel like you can explain it away by saying, well, they know that these things are not going to sell in huge volume. This is a good way to test this stuff. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. they're really looking at is not whether people are more productive with two screens, which is ludicrous. Yeah. It's whether the architectural changes that they made work, right? Not just yeah. work, but work well, you know, work, like yeah. really do benefit battery life, still perform adequately. And mm -hmm. if so, you know, again, this is theory, this is not based on anything, yeah. but I feel like it's not, you know, we're talking about, will this UI come to normal Windows 10? I mm -hmm. Will this architecture, will this become Windows 10? I think is the bigger mm -hmm. question, the better mm -hmm. question. Yep. And I think that if it is successful, the answer is yes. Right. Yep. And by you know, successful, you know, I don't mean they sell X number of units. I mean, right. it works. Right. I think the reason they're limiting it to start with to dual screens is what you're saying. Plus, I think they need to draw a line in the sand and say only these newer devices are going to get this. And that's their first true newer device category for this year, I guess. Yeah, right. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we talked about this, you know, last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was. But um there's also this little 
notion of a new type of Intel processor, right? That has kind of mm-hmm. an arm like set of cores, big cores, little cores, you know, that kind of thing. And they didn't explain this to my knowledge uh, adequately or at all. Will the uh, these Windows 10X devices, this first gen especially, require that kind of chipset, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or is that or is that just one way they could go? Could a PC maker ship a normal Intel Core, or whatever processor, and put Windows 10X on it? Um, yeah. You know, are these architectural changes dependent on literally a hardware architectural change? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, because I don't feel like they've explained. That. But yeah, listen, I. I, I will say we often talk about how Microsoft doesn't communicate very well. I'm not actually complaining about that here. I, I, I am actually impressed by how mm-hmm. much they have communicated about this thing. Yeah, same. Uh, this yep. is more information than I expected. I just want to be clear about that because I do, I, I do complain about that when I feel like that's warranted. I'm, mm-hmm. uh, I'm actually very happy with what they've told us, but there are still questions. I mean, so yeah, uh, I'm just, I'm laying that it's not a complaint. I'm just noting mm-hmm. like we there's still things we don't know, so we can make assumptions and guesses about the future but i think it's important to acknowledge some of the things that we're just not sure about because they haven't yep. said it one way or the other i would love them at build to have a session about windows core os i i truly don't think they will do that but it would be yeah. cool to find yeah. out what they're how they tweaked it under the covers and what they think they can get out of that and, and is maybe the plan to adapt <laughs> when 10 yeah. Right. It has to be. It has to be. It has right? to be. I know. I agree. I think it has to be at some point, but I, like maybe yeah. they're just waiting till they feel like they can definitely pull it over the goal line and make it happen. Maybe that's why they haven't said more about that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We'll see. And, and you know, Windows 10, I don't know what else to call it, like the desktop version of Windows 10, the, the car, what, what yeah. is Windows 10 today, not Windows 10X. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Obviously, that will continue to run on. Um, Normal, I don't know what else to call those either. Normal Intel core processors, et cetera, uh, and AMD equivalents and all that kind of stuff. Um, Windows 10X, notable, notably, uh, right, is Intel specific, I think, right? Did it is for now. Yeah. They said for now, but they hinted it won't always be. Yeah, well, it can't always be, right? I mean, right. for this thing to become mainstream, yeah. it's they're gonna, it's gonna have to work everywhere. So, right. Again, you know it. it uh, given the way they announced this and knowing what the schedule is like for this year uh, or knowing what we do know about the schedule this year, I would have assumed we would learn a lot about this at Build and we've learned a lot about it before Build and I think that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Me too. Kudos, Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> When's <laughs> Build? No, build is middle of May. Yep. Yep. That, yeah, a couple of months. Yeah, Not that far months. away, really. So... I agree. I would yep. love to see a, um, a breakout on. Uh, a breakout I know, like on. under the covers. Yeah. Come on, Microsoft. Somebody yeah. could do this. I'd love to see that. <laughs> well, it's a neat thing because they're, you know, they're modernizing the platform. And I think I made that NT yeah. comparison probably last week. Um, mm-hmm. At one point, yeah. NT was kind of parallel to Windows and DOS, DOS and Windows. And, and they were two different things. And they ran some of the same apps, you know, and over time uh, they merged and NT picked up the driver model, the application compatibility stuff from mainstream windows and it became windows over time. I feel like there's a really strong chance that this could happen with the windows 10 X as well. And maybe that conversation is really about windows core OS, right? But right. that the, mm-hmm. the underlying architecture becomes this newer thing where you still have to kind of deal with the legacy past, but you do it in a way that is, um, uh, more modern and energy mm-hmm. efficient and safe and et cetera. But it's it's neat right. that they don't have to throw out the past because mm-hmm. the, the time when they have, that's never worked. True. All right. All righty. Mary Jo, you're going to be in St. Louis on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I am. Uh, we're doing a panel on the future of the cloud for our sponsor, Worldwide Technology, WWT. I'm sorry to say this is not open to the public, but if you are a WWT customer, I think you could probably call your rep and say, I want to see that panel. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, we are going to do a meetup. Uh, oh, I should I should actually get that information because we're going to – Mary Jo won't be there because she's going to be I doing know. this show. Bah. I will be here next week again. <laughs> Mike will come in again because I have to fly yeah. to St. Louis. Um but you're gonna. You're smart. You're gonna wait, 
and uh, and but she's but as a result, you'll maybe you'll come late to it. I don't know. When do you get in on? Yeah, that? If, yeah, I get in like at ten something. So if you guys are still at it, maybe so. <laughs> um, where, it, where have we put that information? That's probably look at my Slack. Sorry, Teams. <laughs> my teams account no it's slack uh <laughs> at the <laughs> we're gonna be at the train wreck saloon I, oh, see mary joe you would love that i know yeah. although i did look at the beer list and was a little afraid i will say is that good or bad <laughs> uh, there's a lot of budweiser unsurprising oh, well it's st louis it's okay <laughs> i know it's it's understandable i mean i believe that's where budweiser is <laughs> Maybe in the some... smallest part of the Inbev yeah, right, empire. Right, right. Maybe they'll have some <laughs> special Budweiser. Seven... Yeah, it, there were specials. Yeah. See, there you go. You could have some real, oh, no. really good Budweiser. <laughs> 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 we will be there Wednesday night, uh, next Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Uh, St. Louis time. The Trainwreck Saloon. It's no host. So bring money. Uh, <laughs> you got you to buy your own Bud. Sorry. And I will stay as long as we can. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, Worldwide Tech is actually a really, uh, we love them as a sponsor because they're a really good company. For people who are buying enterprise technology, adding uh, things like um, storage, multi-cloud, hyper-converged uh, infrastructure, networking, security, secondary storage, data analytics, AI, all the things that, you know, nowadays an enterprise can't live without but they're complicated and integrating them into your existing uh, structure can be challenging that's why worldwide technology has created their advanced technology center they saw this coming 10 years ago they started building it and over the last 10 years it has grown like topsy half a billion dollars worth of enterprise equipment is in there from hundreds of oems key partners heavyweights like dell emc for the storage vmware Intel, emerging disruptors like Equinix. If you so what the ATC is really cool. I'm, one of the things I'm excited about going out there is to, I'm going to get to see the ATC, take a tour of that. It's cool because the engineers at WWT use it to spin up proofs of concept, to do pilots for their customers, making sure that everything will work together, give their customers an idea of what to expect. So it's really great. But they've it, got, it goes a step beyond that because. The uh, Advanced Technology Center also has on-demand and schedulable labs you can use on things like Dell EMC's VxRail, on Data Protection Central, and IDPA. Um, Mary Jo, you, I'm going to need your help because I can't, it's hard for me to wrap my tongue around these enterprise things. I, I, I'm not <laughs> as enterprisey as you are. Uh, but I'm going to learn a lot, I think, when we go out to WWT this next week. These labs are, are awesome. There are hundreds of labs to explore in every area of enterprise technology. They call it lab as a service, a dedicated lab space within the ATC where customers can do their own programmatic testing on this entire half billion dollar ecosystem WWT has put together. And because it's virtual, you don't, you don't have to even go to St. Louis to use the labs. You can do it 24 seven anywhere in the world. Here's the place you've been looking for, the information you need. And by the way, there's more than just hands-on labs. At the ATC, you get access to articles, case studies, all the tools that will make a difference in today's fast-paced world. They just launched this digital platform uh, uh, this summer, and it's been a rousing success. It creates a multiplier effect of knowledge, speed, and agility anywhere, anytime around the world for customers and their partners. So there's a couple of things, a couple of... Uh, takeaways here for you first of all you want to create an account and you want to get access to those labs go right now to the website wwt.com slash twit worldwide technology wwt.com slash twit you can get access to all the labs wwt they're famous for simplifying the complex wwt.com slash twit worldwide technology delivering business and technology outcomes around the world we're really excited about going out there uh we got mike doroche from uh, gartner um, you're going to be on the panel with me. And Alex Lindsay is. And I, at first I thought, Alex Lindsay talking about the cloud, but I realized he's kind of the king of streaming technologies. <laughs> he does more for everybody from Google and Facebook to the White House for streaming and cloud stuff. He, is a, he really is the king of the cloud in, in a certain area. And so I thought it'd be fun to have him come out too. It'll be, a, it'll be a good time. This Wednesday, if you're a WWT customer, ask your rep about the panel we're holding in St. Louis 
It'll be actually the panel. The panel will be Thursday. <laughs> it should be. Yeah, a, these guys, these guys are partners with like AWS and Microsoft and Google oh, Cloud, like huge. Red Hat. Yeah, yeah. I know. I I didn't know how huge they were until I looked into it. I was like, wow, they're big. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, on to mm, more important matters, like Google <laughs> reverting to its true self. The Google man. <laughs> He's at it again. <laughs> I thought you'd pick Where up on this part. Mark Penn when I need him? <laughs> oh, no. Don't summon him. He'll appear. Uh, don't, don't say his Does name anyone have times. any chicken feet? I'm making a little <laughs> offering. Oh, man. <sighs> so. Yes, so. So. Uh, as people probably understand by now, one of the big benefits of the new Microsoft Edge is that it's really Chromium. With a bunch of Microsoft stuff taking place with the Google stuff, some tracking protection built in, et cetera, et cetera. And you can use the extensions from the Google Play Store. Uh, from, I'm sorry, from the uh, Chrome Web Store. Um, or from, I guess, from any other third-party store. But uh, they now detect. This is something that, um, what was the browser maker? Um, Vivend uh, Vivendi. Vivaldi. Vivendi. Vivaldi. Vivaldi, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes. I uh, had the same problem where you use their browser to go to the Chrome web store to install extensions. It detects you're not Chrome and it throws up a bogus message oh. in this case telling you that Edge is not secure and you want to be careful about using the new Edge. You should use Chrome instead, which is completely bogus. Um, and what Vivaldi noticed, that actually Vivaldi had other compatibility problems too, supposedly. And they noticed that if they just spoof it and say that they're Chrome, everything works fine. And this is clearly Google going out of their way just to scare people for no good reason. And um, this is the thing we were a little bit worried about because remember when they first announced this, that they were switching to Chromium for the new edge, a lot of people were like, well, we have all this really bad experience with Google. Um, you know, the Windows Phone days, uh, you know, a lot of problems there. YouTube and so forth. And what if they pull this baloney again? Right. And, well... They are. <laughs> so, but uh, to be fair, Microsoft does that all the time. Every time um, you launch Chrome, they say, "Come on, you really don't want to use Chrome. You want to use Edge, mm. right?" I mean, this is their, it's a it's a war. It's a battle <sighs> back and forth. You know, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to defend this behavior, though. Um, oh no, it's not a good thing. Don't you just think it's temporary? That's what I think yeah. because I feel like every time Microsoft and Google have talked about. You know, hey, why are you doing this to my browser? Why does this product not work with this? There's always some kerfuffle happening, and then it all just kind of works out. No, I hope you're right. Um, <laughs> I, I don't see. I, I guess I don't see it escalating. So I, I think the I issue either. is no. the issue is it. In this case, it's a bogus warning. And I, I like, in other words, they're not just saying, hey, look, we'd rather you use Chrome. Chrome has all these advantages over Edge. Here they are. When you rather mm -hmm. use Chrome, Chrome is awesome. They're saying, hey, uh, Edge is not secure. You shouldn't use that. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, and I so almost I, just I feel like know. it's a standard, like, boilerplate message. And I think once yeah. the right person well, at Microsoft gets to them and says, hey, guys, like, Come on. Yeah, right. Uh, so that I do agree <laughs> with. I, I uh, we right. tend to um, humanize these companies as if it were some giant Borg right. entity where every part is talking yeah. to every part and decisions are all are made centrally. Yeah. I mean, this could have been something that came out of some small group that works on this small stupid thing at Google and the higher ups who are involved with people from Microsoft and they all seem to get along great. By the way, um, seeing this might be upset about it as well and it might just go away. Yeah, that, that yeah, yeah, that that is certainly one outcome. So. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I, I, mean, guess I, I feel like well, now that Microsoft's in the Chromium camp, I just feel like aren't they going to yeah. just, you know, kind of say, okay, you're in, you're in with us now. Well, uh, but like I said, you know, Vivaldi mm -hmm. ran into worse yeah, issues. Yeah. So the, it, if you look up the Vivaldi stuff, it wasn't just this. It was certain features in Google Docs weren't working. They were actually having compatibility mm -hmm. issues with certain Google yeah. services. And what they found was all we did was change the, what do you call it, the browser ID, the, the ID string it sends uh, mm -hmm. to sites. They just changed it to spoof Chrome and everything started working. Because mm -hmm. the browsers are completely compatible from yeah. a rendering perspective. Like they're the same, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Uh, Google, to, to their credit, has talked about removing that kind of a thing as a, um, a browser identification method as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably so they can do even worse stuff. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, Mark Penn or the Gmail man? Uh, Which one? 
I just, <laughs> just saying, you can't trust these guys. <laughs> Everybody wants you to use their browser. It shows you they how do. valuable it yeah. is to have that real estate. Yeah. Yep. You know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No. I look. I. I don't like the. Uh, you go into Windows 10. You go into Settings. You go to uh, Default Apps, and you change Edge to something else. Whatever it is, your choice. Firefox, Chrome, whatever. And it kind of pops up and says, "Are you sure? Are mm -hmm. you sure? You should really give Edge a chance. It's fun. It's cool. A tip. You know. It's like guys, give it up. Like." <laughs> Someone <laughs> specifically went through these steps. They're not. They're not going to have a last minute moment of doubt now. Like you're just being annoying. <laughs> I, I agree. Like that's it's unacceptable. Yeah. But yeah. Oh well. Oh well. Oh well. Yeah, well. well. What are you going to do? I what tell you what you we're going to do. do. We're going to call Mark Penn and we're going to put a stop to this. <laughs> <laughs> the Dark Prince is going to descend on Google and set oh, him straight. Sheesh. Sheesh. <laughs> he Jeez. loves Mark Penn. I, I want to get him a Mark Penn poster. Is, or something. Find out, Paul. I mean, I pretty I would guess Mark Penn is involved in the uh, campaign. Global this, warming. He's involved. In no, no, no. But I think you know he's a political <laughs> animal. I would bet he's involved in the election this year. I would think. Yeah, yeah. let's get bigger stuff. Bigger, going bigger on. fish to fry. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> there he is driving right by the house. Look at that. There he is. Yep. Um. Beep. Beep, beep. I was struck dumb when I ran into him at that event. Remember that oh, surface really? event? Oh, I told yeah. you he was there. Like Mark Penn standing speak. next to me. Oh my God. <laughs> yep. That's kind of scary. Like, he put his cape over his eyes. He disappeared in he some did. sulfur and smoke. It was, it was as soon as he saw that we recognized him, he ran off. Literally, he just ran. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All I wanted a hug. Is it you wanted a hug? Oh, <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, man. Oh, man. If it's wrong, uh, I don't ever want to be right. Oh, well. What are you going to do? So, uh, yesterday, Steve Gibson talking about Windows 10 2004. What? Yeah, look at him being so future leaning. <laughs> what? And he said, that's a strange name. I said, I know. Welcome yeah. to the club. Yeah. Um, we got an update. The ISOs are here. Does that mean we are Gold Master? Gold I, ISO? We are so far past Gold Master. This thing is <laughs> encased in loose sight. It's, <laughs> it's a Gold Master. Yeah, except so they, they haven't they, said that, right? Yeah. They've, they've never said, they'll never say, they'll never say that. <laughs> it's a moving target. I mean, yeah. obviously, they, they completed this, I think, back in December. In the yeah. months since, they have been shipping cumulative updates that improve the quality of the product. The question here is when this thing goes out to the public. I'm going to guess and say it's probably going to be sometime starting in the next 30 days or so. But mm. um, In March. But the I think the, yeah, I mean, the ISOs are just another indication that it's right. signed, mm -hmm. sealed, and delivered. Right. And it's a very fairly, well, not as minor an update as 1909, but pretty small update, right? There's not a ton. Yeah, and actually the, the improvements that are in there are kind of meaningful and useful. And they're, yeah. none of them are particularly major, but like you said, but right. um, this is the type of, these are the type of updates I like to see. It, it's more of a traditional feature update than say the one that they shipped in the fall of 1909, which was just a cumulative yeah. update. Um that's good. And then I, uh, yeah. and we mentioned um, Windows Latest earlier, I think, for, I don't remember why. Um, but those guys also had a story about how it's, uh, th they've heard from some sources now that Microsoft will handle the 2020, 20, the 2020 yeah. releases of Windows 10 the same way they did last year. Yeah, I've heard that too from my, yeah. my own so personal sources. There you go. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. The one big thing in 2004 is Windows Subsystem for Linux 2, right? Like, isn't that pretty much one of the biggest new It is one of the biggest, but, I mean, that only impacts a certain number it of does. people. There is, there's some right. Windows Search stuff in there uh, that I think is kind of a big deal. You know, Cortana has been broken out to its own app, um, mm -hmm. which if you use Cortana, I suppose is, yeah. is kind of a big thing because they can actually update that more often now, mm -hmm. um, and we'll see if they do. But, um yeah, off the top of my head, I mean, there's really not, there's not that much. I know. It's, yeah. I, but that's good. It's good. Yeah, I agree. Is 22.6% uh, 
a good number? Yeah, it is. Um, last month, it was somewhere in the 15% range, so it's like a 50% jump. Oh, that month is big. Month. Yeah. We're talking yeah, about the 1909. Bigger, yeah, version. so this is the version that shipped late last year, November-ish. Um, the bigger figure, in a way, is that when you combine 1903 and 1909, which are the two versions that Microsoft shipped in 2019, uh, those two combined are, I'm looking for, yeah, 75.5% of all of the versions of Windows 10 currently in use. And that's that's a big deal because remember the, the original vision for this thing was Microsoft wanted to get as much of the user base as possible on a single version of Windows 10. Um, since then, the strategy for Windows 10 has changed a little bit. And, and like I, I just kind of alluded to, 1903 and 1909 are actually the same version of Windows. It's just that 1909 has a couple of additional uh, optional new features. So that is, that's actually, that's pretty incredible, right? So basically 75% of the people using Windows 10 are basically running the latest version of the operating system uh, as of today. That's, that's fantastic. Hmm. That's an amazing. That's add duplex numbers, right? Yes. Oh, it's not Microsoft yeah. numbers, of course. Yeah. No. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, Microsoft no, 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 would, never, no, 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 no. would never admit to this. Um, <laughs> well, but, you know, the, it, obviously some people, well, you know, this is, they, they use whatever metho uh, methodology they use, and they do, but they surveyed 90,000 computers. I mean, it's it's not uh, 2,000 computers or something. I mean, this is, you know, yeah. this is pretty good data. Yeah. So, And it's, yeah. it's um, machines that are out in the world. I mean, um, they don't have a lot of insight, probably, we don't actually know, into machines behind uh, that are maybe centrally managed by corporations and it's possible that some of those will be on older versions on, in higher uh, percentages because those guys might have long time long time servicing or or delaying updates or whatever it is um, but I still this is uh, to me this is still this is uh, this is good data I would say good 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 uh, <laughs> Icon Gate. If you thought <laughs> yeah. Edge Gate was bad, get ready for Icon yep. Gate. From the people that brought you Surface Gate. <laughs> I know. Everything yeah. is a gate on the on So the how do you get these new icons? <laughs> it's all a gate. Oh, you don't have to do anything, Leo. They'll just appear. Just oh. like the coronavirus. Whether you want it or not. <laughs> um, and maybe that's part of the problem. But uh, I don't... I, I, I mean, honestly, myself, uh, personally, aesthetically, I think they're okay. Like, I don't mind them. But I think if you look at it a little more broadly, I mean, these icons are, um, they're really blue. And I don't know why they're blue. And it's kind of like if you ever use like Mac OS and you open like a finder window, for some reason, the folders are blue. And you're like, well, that's a weird color. I could probably change that somewhere, right? No, you can't. They're blue. <laughs> they're just blue. And I don't know why, but they are, you know. And so I would say that if you look at the icons today before they switch over to this new design, there's like white and black icons. And, and the white ones, which um, they're actually, I guess, yeah, the, 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 the notion of these kind of one color icons dates back to Windows 8 and the tiles and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, vector graphics and that kind of treatment. And when, with the addition of the dark theme in Windows 10 a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, whatever that was. Uh, now they have dark and light versions of them. And that's I think that's actually kind of nice, too. I think that kind of functionality is nice. But when you switch over to this new design, they're colorful, arbitrarily colored blue, and they don't switch if you have light or dark mode on. So they're just always the same now. And I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Blue's Me, the new... I didn't notice it. Black. <laughs> <laughs> Blue's the new I got the new mail yeah. icon on Windows 10. Today, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. people notice this kind of stuff. I mean, it's the thing you're staring. I know. At all the time. I'm kidding him because I, I always, he's like, "Did you notice this change? No. This header change?" No. And I'm like, "Nope." <laughs> no. No. I am. I'm the I, worst. This is. It's hard to see those icons <laughs> underneath Notepad. I mean, they're just not. It, it, it yeah, is. Notepad's going to no. change. Uh, notepad is going to change. I know. There's a blue and you know, icon I don't coming. like that. I don't like that no. new night. No, you shouldn't. Icon. It's terrible. Oh. Yeah. It's awful. It looks like a toaster. I'm just going to say. Oh. Yeah, oh, a blue toaster. 
Are these? Yeah, the where's ones? that list? There's a picture of them all somewhere all right, yeah, on all Medium. Let me see. You have Let a post on it, don't you, Paul? Sort of. I, yeah, I will say. I mean, the, the Notepad icon that we do use in Windows today is really old. Like this dates back to it Windows Vista. It's glass. I know. It's angled yeah. to the left, which is the style of the day. Um, now we're going. If you right. were to look at like the mail icon from Vista or some of the other icons, they would look so antiquated you wouldn't even believe they were a thing. <laughs> but we still use this one. Is this the is this the notepad the one with it looks like a it's, notepad right under? Yeah. Under, yep. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Terrible. I don't understand why it's blue, yellow, red. That's yeah, I and you won't. Yeah, yeah, you'll never understand. <laughs> Seems like a rather random choice. Or the um, uh, the paint icon must be in there somewhere. There's, it's a little palette, and yeah. it's a blue palette, and it has a couple of colors on it. Yeah, <laughs> which you know, it's like well, the same I, red, yellow, and purple. Yeah, not green, huh? That's not no green. green. We don't do green. There's green, isn't there? There's green over know. here. The green is apparently the office Excel, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. the office has green, so we don't yeah, want to confuse you. It's not a Microsoft icon. I mean, a um, uh, Windows icon. Right. Yeah. And then the I new, the new what Windows is the 10 folder? Icon? What is that sitting in? What is that? What is that yeah, thing? Yeah, it's a. Um, it's like a. Like, in other words, it's a Manila folder, and you're putting it down in a. Um, yeah. Like a thing on your desk that would yeah. hold paper. Okay. Paper. Like. Because <laughs> you know how we all. Yeah. You, as we, one you, does. We, you know, we all remember. You don't those. really need that, honestly, no. because it's not a folder. It's an icon. Yeah. It's not going <laughs> to fall over. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, you also, know what? I'm not really reason, crazy about these. They're they're a little yeah, so, low. Sorry. No, I just I like no, the microphone. Terrible. Yeah. The problem is this 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 icon set that you're looking at suggests they're more colorful than they really are because the Windows ones are mostly all just blue. Oh. There's a couple of exceptions like Groove and Movies and TV and Maps are orange. Oh. Yeah. And we don't know why. We don't know why. Well, yeah, see there's <laughs> PowerPoint's orange or Yeah, but that's Office. Oh, wait a minute. But what's this? There's other P's. That's the other PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's project? Project? Yeah, there's Project. Project, ah. yeah, there's project PowerPoint. I can and, see how uh, you'd use color coding to say, oh, like, except, like all the office things are green. Yeah. Yep. I can see how you would do well, that. Excel is green. Word is blue. Oh, PowerPoint is, blue. is orange. Oh, so that's yep. never mind. Well, they, those are branding colors. You know, like right. uh, uh, one, one note is. Purple. purple guys they're modern is, that's it we, that's all you modern. need to know they're modern what's, so I, I, I take great exception to that term because they're modern today <laughs> but that notepad icon was modern in 2005 and today it looks ludicrous okay. what is that is this icon thing? looking at me that's groove <laughs> and it's supposed to uh, <laughs> it's a record it's, i get it with like a record it's player a i get it eye. it looks it's, it's staring at me i don't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well yep Okay. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. That's too bad. What, what are you going to do? What complain. will you that's do? That's what I do later. I'm going to complain. That's your life. I don't think it matters. Who cares? It's just an icon. I it's agree. It's just wow. an icon. I couldn't I agree. agree. This matters more than anything we've ever talked about, and I'm never going to stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> You're never getting past this. <laughs> yep. God damn them. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Um, I see on your list, Edge heads out to release a preview. I thought Edge was out. Well, Edge is available as a manually acquired download, right? Oh, so this hey, is, actually oh, kind this of a is big the deal. Ins automatically installed version. Yeah, so, so this, this, is, um, this is the beginning of the automatic rollout of the browser to people who just have Windows 10, and it will replace, even though the old one will still be on there, it will replace the old version of Edge oh with the new. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah, so it's actually a, a pretty big milestone. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to go out over Windows Update, right? But we don't have. Do we have the date? We don't, or even an estimate. No, but we this is because it's in release preview. I mean, this is right. the this is how it's you set that ball in motion. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yep. soon, soon, TM. You know? Hey, remember Flanga at Fred Langa? Mm -hmm. no, I yeah. remember Fred Langa. I <laughs> Flanga. <laughs> I call him Flanga. Okay, that was his handle. Um, yeah, like on coffee. He just wrote and Woody. Yeah, something like that. He's been around a while. Uh, yeah. He just wrote in uh, Woody's newsletter that uh, Microsoft is uh, eliminating the classic screensaver app from Windows 10. Is that? Now, oh, see, boy. that's more upsetting to me. Interesting. You hadn't heard that? No, mm -hmm. but I, that doesn't surprise me. Who uses screensavers? I do. How would you even? 
Okay, sorry. sorry I mean, they sorry. don't do anything. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying you need them or anything. Yeah. Well, I hope not, Leo. But those of those of us on so, Macintoshes cherish yeah. our screensavers. The screensaver interface in um, Windows is the one that was in there. You know, from Windows ninety five. It's classic. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's control mm -hmm. panel. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there are actually. It's funny. These are there. If you open it, you, you have to to find this. By the way, you could probably search and start uh, search. But I found it. Let me just see before I say that. Oh, maybe not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can. Type in screensaver and then turn screensaver on off. It's a control panel. So right. you can mm -hmm. find it from settings as well. It's it's, it's uh, hilarious looking is what it is. But those, <laughs> uh, those .scr files, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there were a lot of third-party .scr files and stuff. And remember, there was that was even a business. There was a company, it's long gone, yeah. called Berkeley Systems. Remember, they meant what, oh, flying, yeah, flying toasters? toasters. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, so I'm going to leave mine on the uh, bubbles, and I'm going to leave it on during the podcast because it's like uh, it's just entertaining. Your cat would love it. By you the way, should. I guess you it's should. the end of an era. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Do people use them on Windows? Like, do people still use them? I, there's no way. The, the, you know, you you understand that like a screensaver actually is the opposite of good power management, right? I it, know. People always it, thought, oh, you don't want it to burn the image into your. Yeah, into that's your not as much. That's not a problem with LCDs, so you don't really. No, like turn that. off. Turn right. off the screen. Yeah, that's, yeah that that's what I do. I shut mine off. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's more. It's just an amusement. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, you it can was get... also a key. Uh, it was a key part of many movies in the 1990s. Yeah, you know, you'd come into an office. <laughs> the guy was gone, and his screensaver was on. Yeah, I. Uh, you can get so the best screensaver is on Apple TV. They have these amazing yes. slow mo drone yes. um, mm. and underwater. Yeah, the 4K outdoor incredible. Things, yeah, yeah, they're and beautiful. And it's called the Aerial Screensaver, and there are uh, apps for both Windows and Mac that will put those on your computer. Mm -hmm. I use that because I just they're so pretty. But you're right. Yep. I mean, that's that's got to be power hungry. Yeah. For, yeah. yeah. And if you, uh, if you use a Roku saver. or an Amazon device, you have a real terrible version of that. <laughs> they're just awful. <laughs> awful. Like they're they're not yeah, good. But the the awful. version on Apple is impressive. They is really they're good. so beautiful. I think. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they really are. Um, Apple actually, when it released Catalina, its newest version of macOS, uh, released a new screensaver, Drift. Yeah. So right. they're still... Not Grift. Not Grift. <laughs> <laughs> I watched Grifters the other night with, yeah. oh, that's it, with Annette Benning and Angelica <laughs> Houston and John Cusack. That's a good movie. <laughs> Grift. I'm on the Grift. Isn't it? It's so good. Uh, let's talk about, I knew when I saw this story that Mary Jo would be all excited and then to, later I'll talk to Stacy. She'll she'll be all excited too. Microsoft excited about this. has gone. You were excited, Paul. Sure. Azure Sphere general availability. Leo, mm -hmm. I love Linux. You know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Azure Sphere is a project Microsoft's been working on for a couple of years to make microcontrollers more secure, and this is huge in the IoT space. So the way they did it was they built their own version of Linux to put on a microcontroller. And then they added their own cloud security service to it, partnered with a bunch of chip vendors who are making custom chips for this with Microsoft certifying that Azure Sphere OS runs on it. And now it is generally available to people who want to start embedding these chips in new IoT devices. So yeah, it is a big deal because um, Microsoft has been looking for ways to help grow the IoT market. And one of the biggest fears around that space is security. You know, you keep hearing about hackers targeting IoT devices and their contention is if they secure it end to end, that it, it will be something that companies like OEMs and consumers ultimately can count on as being more secure um, and this is a big market for them. So yeah, I think I think it's big. A lot of people just focused on it's Linux. Why did they use Linux? And you know, it in the microcontroller space and in the also real time operating space, Linux has a very huge percentage uh, share in that space. So that explains to me why they went with Linux here. Yeah, I was uh, the thing that struck me about this is uh, Microsoft had a couple of different blog posts about it, and one was sort mm -hmm. of an interview between some of the people yeah. who work on this team, and they were talking about the four core components of Azure Sphere mm -hmm. as a platform. And obviously, this is the hardware; they have the chipset vendors that are working yeah. hand in hand with Microsoft. 
there's Microsoft's contributions, the uh, the OS itself, right, which is designed to work on those chipsets and is secure by design. There's the security service, which is what they're kind of marketing as the big, the big bit. Mm -hmm. But then there's the fourth part, which <laughs> I just kind of had to laugh at. <laughs> people, people are the know. fourth component. And yeah. I think what they really mean by people is Microsoft. They do. <laughs> right? well, they what they really mean is Microsoft. <laughs> and what that means is they have a team of people that are, ah. uh, that are providing ongoing security monitoring of these devices right. and ensuring that when there is a problem that they will react quickly and, and, and fix whatever it's, that problem is. It's, so it's, it's my memory that Stacy was excited about this because this is an IOT platform, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. So, but I yeah, mean, you know, so, someone was, like Microsoft doing this and doing it in an yeah. open way and not as right. a Microsoft or exactly. a, a Windows thing. So is, it would yeah. give buyers some assurance because there'll be a, I presume, a Sphere logo mm -hmm. uh, they, they'd put yeah. on the box. And when I buy an IoT device, I go, oh, good, that's got Azure Sphere in it. I can trust it. It's safe. Yeah. And presumably when you install it, you don't get Candy Crush or ads for Microsoft <laughs> God, Edge. I hope, and, I hope not. Presumably. <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> No, the reason uh, I was I was watching this and excited about it, I, I learned about this thing a while ago because there's a distinguished engineer at Microsoft whose name is Galen Hunt. Galen Hunt used to run the operating systems research team for Microsoft. So I used to try to always watch any project he was on because I'm like, it's about operating systems, right? And when I saw he was doing this thing called Project Sopris, he was going out and trying to find um, processor vendors who would work with Microsoft to make secure microcontrollers. And I'm like huh, are they going to put Windows on microcontrollers? And then when the announcement happened two years ago, it's like, surprise, we did Linux. And he, it was Galen Hunt and his team who did this. Uh, so, yeah. Which, by the way, is deal. another part of the story. It did take them two years. Right. Right, from time of announcement yeah. to release, almost. I mean, they announced it, I think it was May yeah. 2018. So, I mean, what? It, it, I feel like this thing sort of disappeared for a while from public eye. Even though if you kind of go back and look, they had milestones and they were, you know, they would post from time to time. But it, it seems like it took a long time from inception, you know, from public announcement. I mean, it's a brand new release. OS for Microsoft, right? It's yeah. Microsoft yeah. Linux microcontroller operating system. So, you know, it's something they don't want to just kind of throw out there and go, hey, guys, have at it. Check it out. Right. You know, I mean, it was in preview with some really big customers, too, like Starbucks was using it. And even... This was really interesting. Azure Data Center itself used it because you can take Azure Sphere and embed it in this thing that's called a Guardian module. And Guardian module is like a little dedicated device. They say no bigger than a deck of cards. And you can connect a server through that to do more secure processing by connecting to this little mini device um, that will handle the security up front is how I think about it. So, yeah, I, they did a lot of testing. They had to go find all these chip vendors to partner with, uh, like MediaTek. They're doing some things with Qualcomm. Um, who else? NXP. So they went out and got really big partners in this space and convinced them That's to right. work with them on on certifying their chips. So, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty big job, I would say, plus the back-end security service, too. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Azure Sphere, it is here. I am it's the future of forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <Yeah>. Stacy <laughs> will be, what was that will from? be old. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Some old sci fi, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it was the voice of Azure Sphere. You said Guardian. I had to, uh, I had to Danger, get it. Will Robinson. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Danger. I have those too, if you ever, you know, in the mood. Yep. Those are always <laughs> useful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Problem is, I have so many sound effects. <laughs> it's actually hard to it's hard to get to them. Yeah. Um, let's see. Moving on. Um, I've lost. I've, I've lost you because I went to sound effect land. <laughs> Office three sixty five, Microsoft three sixty five. Oh uh, man. Yeah, so I, I just uh, semi coincidentally, I I think I had mentioned these in passing last week, and then I ended up writing up both in the week since. But um, for individuals who are not, or for individuals who would typically buy Office three sixty five home or personal, uh, especially people who you know read our websites and listen to this podcast, I mean, some of them are probably thinking about these commercial versions of Office three sixty five, which are also part of Microsoft three sixty five, and wondering if they make any sense. 
uh, for them? And if so, why? Or where where might you want to use this instead of a consumer version? And honestly, for the most part, they don't make any sense. They're a lot more expensive. They're more restrictive. <laughs> you know, one of the nice things about Office 365, you know, Home, for example, is that you and five other people get a terabyte of storage and get access to the all the downloadable apps on multiple computers. I mean, it's an incredible bargain, you know, for a hundred bucks a year. Um, but the, there are some exceptions. So if you want a custom domain, one of the nice things about Office 365 commercial or Microsoft 365 is that any of those tiers offer that. And you can bring your own uh, domain registrar. You don't have to use GoDaddy like you used to have to do on the consumer side. And uh, now Microsoft doesn't even offer it on the consumer side. So if you weren't grandfathered in, you want to do a custom domain, you kind of have to go to the commercial side. Um, that said, most of those tiers are really expensive. Um, so there's one, I think Mary, Mary Jo has this, right? You're using it is. Office 365 yep. Business Essentials, right? So I am. this is yep. actually really inexpensive. Um, if you pay for, if you agree to an annual um, subscription, it's $5 a month, so $60 yep. a year. Mm -hmm. You get terabyte of OneDrive for business storage. You get that custom domain thing I was talking about. Yep. And you get access to all the web services, so Exchange Online, et cetera, the web apps and all that. What you don't get is the ability to download the desktop apps to your computer. Mm -hmm. uh, for that, you have to upgrade to Business Premium, which is more a lot more expensive. Actually, it's, I think yeah. it's $15 a month or 150 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't need those apps, though. Like once I have right, the online right. apps, I'm good. So. And I, by the way, I think increasingly for a lot of people, they don't either. Mm -hmm. um, you can also mix and match. I mean, I, I know there are some licensing things and people are going to freak out when I say this, but if you had Office 365 Home for you and your family, but you wanted just for you to do a custom domain and have it go through the business essentials, you could pay for both and you could use the Office applications. Um, do, uh, do, do, do. That's a sound of license. No one's going to stop right you. Nobody cares. No, don't do it. Just don't say you're doing it. Just don't um, say you're I doing it. I do it every day and I don't care. Do, no, do, 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 do. So it works fine. Um, the other thing that's interesting, and again, I mentioned. Yes, thank you. Danger, Will Robinson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and again, I, you know, for individuals, I think this is not very well understood, but anytime you sign up for Office 365 commercial or Microsoft 365, um, you also gain access to some tier of Ac Azure Active Directory. Um, danger, danger. Office, <laughs> Office 365 SKUs by default are uh, a, 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 uh, AAD, Azure Active Directory free, the free version or whatever. Uh, Microsoft 365, you get additional capabilities. But what that means is, and again, this is not, not necessarily something most people should do, but just so you know, you can do it, is you could sign into a Windows 10 computer with that user account instead of a Microsoft account. And it's what Microsoft, if you look in Windows 10, they call it a work or school account. And uh, it brings down corporate policy. If it's just your, you know, you and your one account, you, you control the policy. So you're not really bringing anything down you have to worry about. But um, it's it, a lot of people in education or people work for corporations have to do this. This is how you get the corporate policies on your computer that prevent you from sharing corporate information through Outlook or whatever. But um, it's just kind of an interesting thing. I mean, we, we tend to think about, my, you know, Windows 10 and Microsoft accounts. It's kind of the consumer thing. But you can do it with uh, an Azure Active Directory account as well. Um, the thing you don't get is settings sync. So if you wanted to sign on to multiple computers and have your wallpaper or whatever uh, sync over. That's not going to work. Um, for that, you need Microsoft 365 or some kind of Azure extender, um, which will raise the price. This is tactically but dangerous. I'm going to say, bring back you, Micah. He never messes up. <laughs> you know, you we, needed to, we needed to rein him in on the licensing <laughs> thing. Like, you know. I get this question. I swear to God, I, I answered this question while Leah was doing the ad. I literally... This, <laughs> I, I no, I, I get this question so often. Wow, I know. I want it. Yeah. I did sound a like a little bit. Account. Sound like you had it on cue cards. It was a little rude. No, I mean, no. I have like a corporate account. I have a home thing. Can I mix and match? Yes, you can. And I, <laughs> and it's like Paul. The Microsoft licensing specifically prevents you from doing work on a home account. Yeah, it does. And if the police come to your house, danger, let me know. Danger. That never happen. No one. Cares. No one knocking. If, at by your the way, door. if they cared. Word would prevent you from doing it. I know. I, you know, I'm kidding. I'm partially kidding with you for yeah. that, but 
Uh, yeah. But I think it's just, you know, just to be kosher. <laughs> Mary Jo, I hope you didn't write a ZD article using Office 365 Home it. because that's illegal. That's, I did You're not. as bad as Apple, you know, hurting <laughs> Spotify. Like, I, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> okay. So, I know. You know you're I, basically I, a murderer. I don't know what you're doing over it. there. Everyone does it. Everyone does it. But. I don't think we can yeah. condone it in a public oh, setting. I'm, I'm recommending it. It's this my is not a public <laughs> setting. We're just friends here. What are you <laughs> crazy? Family yeah. channel. Guys, you don't <laughs> want to get your kids arrested. I'm just okay. okay. So we get so like people get so weird about stuff. You know, like I. I, know. I, I agree cares. with you. Cares. I'm kidding. No, I don't. You know, I don't know who know does care? It. Our chat room. Who says Leo? <laughs> That yes. was Guardians yep. of Forever. That was the best Star Trek episode ever. With uh, <laughs> that was the Edith Keeler episode, the City on Is the Edge true? of that Forever. Was Star Trek? Yeah, oh, uh, that was one of three Harlan episodes. Star Treks. Uh, well, you know, really... a lot of people, can, you know, confuse classic Star Trek with Space Nineteen Ninety Nine. But I, I wish you I wish you'd get your uh, sci-fi straight. Oh, I'm sorry. I am the Guardian of Forever. Okay, thank you. That does sound like a Star Trek thing. It does, now that I listen to it again. Yeah. I miss watching Kirk wrestle with lizards on rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the deep fake with Elon Musk? and no, no, uh, Wow, yeah. it was Christopher Pike and uh, Jeff mm -hmm. Bezos as the alien. It was a, it was really kind of uncanny. I mean, it was the best deep fake I've seen yet. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, I got that one wrong, too. I said, well, that's like from some old Star Trek. Is that Captain Kirk? Uh, Leo, that's Christopher Pike. Perhaps you remember the Menagerie episode. Oh my God, like the 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 uh, commander before before Kirk, right? That's who that yeah, is. Yeah, the, the, the yeah, show. like for the pilot. <laughs> yeah, right, right. He's the guy in the wheelchair. Dear the... nerds, stop! <laughs> no, no, I no, I you know because. No, I I'm just, we're I'm all, just, we're all pedantic about I'm, the things I'm just, we care. Yeah, yeah I'm we just are. ignorant on all this all stuff. Uh, yeah. So I yeah. apologize. Everyone has their things. They, they yeah. really know. Yeah. Yeah. And me, I know nothing about uh, any of these boy. topics. I tell you, you sleep better at night. There's yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, let's take a break. Our show today brought to you by Fresh Books. I tell you, I know a little bit about this, about making invoices and what a pain in the butt. Uh, when I was a freelancer for a long time, after Tech TV, before I got twit up and running, I had to go to Canada uh, one week a month to uh, call for help up there. And I, then I had to invoice them and I had to do it in Canadian dollars because it was Rogers and I had to put all my expenses in there. And it was really such a pain. I would often just put it off, put it off. The guy, at one point, I filed five invoices <laughs> To all at once, which did not make the bookkeeper at Rogers very happy. She said, you ever do this again? We're never paying you. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a good lesson. If you don't invoice, you don't get paid. But I was kind of, you know, complaining about this. And Amber uh, MacArthur said, there's a new startup. This is 2004, a new startup in Toronto called Fresh Books. You got to try them. Man, did that turn my life around. I started making those invoices. It was actually fun at the end of the month. Plus, with FreshBooks, because as soon as you start using FreshBooks to do your invoicing, you can accept online payments, ACHs in the U.S. or credit card payments anywhere. And that means they're going to pay faster, on average, twice as fast. So not only are you more likely to send out those invoices, they're more likely to pay them on time. And if they don't... Um, FreshBooks has automatic reminders for them. You can make them, you know, harsh or gentle as you as you choose. You'll get notifications when the clients open your invoices. You automatically can bill for late fees. I think that's a very good way of getting people to pay on time. They just FreshBooks makes everything easy. But here's the really cool thing: it is more than invoicing because it's keeping track of accounts receivable, the stuff you invoiced, accounts paid, the income, your expenses. You're actually getting a profit and loss statement. It's actually doing your bookkeeping for you automatically, which means you don't have to worry about this stuff. Focus on what you're doing, you know, the business that you love, and save time invoicing, expensing, tracking your work. Oh, yeah, they do hours. They've saved users 200 hours a year on average. Plus, the FreshBooks app is so awesome. There's, so there's a web, you know, website, but there's also an app on your phone. In either case, you can create client profiles. You can, if you have a recurring invoice, no problem. You can automate that. That's a really nice feature. You can automatically, FreshBooks will automatically combine expenses, billable time, and other items into the invoices. In fact, you can even take pictures of your 
receipts and expenses on the phone. They go right into the invoice. Whether you're a freelance photographer, a carpenter, or going to Canada once a month to do a TV show, you choose the plan that's right for you. Their accounting and reporting tools are great. Tax time's coming up. You're going to wish you were using FreshBooks all last year. Now's the time to start it for next tax time. It make You get all the reports you need to either give your uh, tax preparer or you can do it yourself. Um, it also lets you know for the first time ever, at, at least if it wasn't my experience, whether you're making money. You know, am I, am I actually in the black on this? FreshBooks is a simple, intuitive tool for small business owners. And what's great, if you ever need a little bit of help, they're up there, they're still in Toronto, those nice, award-winning Toronto-based support team. They're friendly, they're happy to help. Get back to what you care about, what growing a business, the thing you're in the business to do, and let the paperwork go to FreshBooks. Life will be better, I promise you. FreshBooks.com slash Windows. If you do me a favor, though, FreshBooks.com slash Windows and put Windows Weekly in the How Did You Hear About Us box, okay? If you do that, by the way, you also get a 30-day free trial. So you're doing yourself a favor, too. We are so grateful to FreshBooks, a longtime supporter. I mean, honestly, I've been using them since 2004, but also uh, a great supporter of our podcast. And you can support us, too, by going to FreshBooks.com slash Windows, enter Windows Weekly, try it free for 30 days. Ooh, this is new. For a limited time, FreshBooks is offering 50% off your first three months when you sign up for the paid plan. This is a little extra incentive. If you This is for new customers only. So if you've been hearing me talk about it and you say, ah, I should do this, do it now. 50% off your first three months when you sign up for a paid plan for new customers only. Offers can't be combined. So this is this is the one. But I have 50% off. I, you know, FreshBooks.com slash Windows. They really are nice people. Ah, oh, all right. Speaking of nice people, I hear that Paul and Mary Jo can be pretty cool once in a while. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> what is um, what is is Defender? 8? Now I'm familiar with Defender. That's the antivirus that comes with Windows 10. Right. Yep. And I know what an ATP. What is an ATP? What is Defender? ATP? Advanced Threat Protection. Okay. <laughs> that as opposed to Advanced Persistent Threat. What is Advanced? Yeah. Is this like a better? Is this like a better version of Defender? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no. You got to be I was honest. curious how you were going to answer that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so Microsoft renamed Windows Defender to plain old Defender. I think it was last year. Yep. And at the time, the hinting was because we want to take Defender cross-platform. So oh. um, Defender is an endpoint protection product. Um, and so on iOS and Android, that's kind of how it's going to function. On Linux, it's going to be available on servers, oh. is my understanding. Oh. Um, so this does more than just antivirus. It does um, proactive, what would you say, like warning, remedia and helps with exactly remediation right too, yeah. right? It basically yeah. does, it, it is looking for potential threats in yeah. behavior. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's it is proactive. It's I'm sure so, they will use the terms AI and machine learning in there somewhere. I know they. I'm sure they will too. You, you know what was funny though when they announced it was coming in preview to iOS and Android, I saw a lot of pushback on it, and I saw a lot of people say, "Yeah, but why are they doing this? Do you yeah. really need this on iOS and Android, or is it just Microsoft checking off boxes?" And I was like, "Wow, I guess I didn't think this would be controversial, but it seems to be." In yep. question, right? <laughs> why? Why you would want it? Well, honestly, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Are we serious? Because I, 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 I can tell you why right now. Why? It's because it's for Microsoft's <laughs> enterprise customers. Mm. They want to be able to control this protection no, that's right. across every device right. that, every, that they're using. Right. Okay. Yeah, this that's is, different. This is about. It's not for end users. It's for enterprise. It's not for. It, it's right. not. Yeah, it's customer. like look, we have another right. app in the store. No, it's no. okay. No, that no, makes no. a lot of. That makes a lot. You of have sense. a yeah. you have a single management console for managing the security of your environment. Everyone is yeah. not just using Windows. You know, you have to make sure you can. Uh, you want you want to see those behaviors happening, on yeah. the devices that people are actually using. Okay, that's different. I agree. Yeah. That's a that's a yeah. good yeah. thing then. All right. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't something to be cynical about. 
Guys, can you leave that no. to the master? I'll handle this. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I saw people pushing back, I was like, wait, what? And then I was like, oh, wait, yeah. I think they, it's That's because they aren't looking at it like an enterprise end-to-end -end thing. Yeah. Right? Well, and there's another reason. And so the, the other thought is if they were selling this to consumers, you know, one of the things they were scared about us for so long about offering an antivirus is competing with the third-party antivirus mm -hmm. companies. They didn't oh want to get in that I battle. So those, those were the days. You want to hear some cynicism? <laughs> here's here's Microsoft that designs designs a system so insecure <laughs> that a third party <laughs> market has grown up around yeah. it. No, I agree. To fix the problems that Microsoft yeah, created. Yeah. No, no, they so Microsoft's should fix it. Going to enter this market yeah. with their own product to fix those problems, and they're going to charge you for it. Are you kidding me? No. And what was that product called? It was right. called One Something. Uh, one. What was that called? Remember, they had a yeah. security product that they briefly charged yeah. for one. I know. One, oh, I can almost get it. Come on, chat room, uh, help us. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they charge for it. And I, I at the time, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You're going to charge people to fix a problem in your product. Right. You know? So, no. And so I was glad when they built Def Defender in. One. And that's how it should be. Um, but yeah. this is yeah. this is a, really as much a management it is. Yeah, it's as old. much a management product yeah. as a security product. Okay, that makes it's sense. about closing holes. One care. Yeah. Live one, one care. care. Yes. yes. <laughs> Windows Live one care. Yes, yes. of course. Yeah. Live live. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Yeah. Um, okay. And they bought a product and uh, that became eventually Defender, but that was that went through different permutations as well. Yeah. And speaking of one, one drive is going fluent. Yeah, whatever that means. Fluent. I know. I was like, woo! <laughs> I know. Fluent is a programming language, right? No, sadly. It's a framework? It's a, uh, no. Design <laughs> it's a language. Oh, it's a design yeah. language. Yeah. Like a design language. Oh. Yes, it's a design language. It just means it's a little prettier. Oh, never mind then. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, sorry. Sorry, but mm -hmm. I don't care. Um, oh, but I do care about the Xbox. In fact, the big uh, reveal this week of yeah. the specs for the Xbox One X. I think the thing that people need to focus on here is that these specs in isolation don't really mean anything, right? So well, they sound <laughs> good. Like 12 teraflops. That sounds good. Speaking of Star Trek, I think that's like how fast the Enterprise can go. 12 <laughs> teraflops. Um, what you, basically what we're getting here is like 2x performance over the Xbox One X. And more important is consistent 60 frames a second or better on 4K games and support for 8K games, which is, you know, should be in air quotes because it's like people are going to, um, or developers, I should say, are going to be able to choose like they do today on the Xbox One X uh, frame rate over graphic quality, right? I mean, that's the... The ongoing thing. How in, long in before games. they start calling the Xbox Series X the Triple X? <laughs> I like it. Mm -hmm. They should. There's a lot of X's. I like that top. Does that? That's really what it's going to look like. Yeah. Because it's kind of curvy. It looks like one of those 3D renderings of yes, it's space. Not exactly the same thing. Like a waveform in 3D yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. I yep. like it. I do too. And, but so it's a monolith. It's very sci-fi looking. Yeah. What's smart delivery? Who what now? It says 12 oh, teraplot, teraplots. Yeah, so one of the, yeah, I think I, I, smart delivery. I, I actually have no idea what that is like. <laughs> Variable rate shading, hardware accelerated, direct X ray tracing. Smart delivery. It's uh, quick it's like resume. The they have today, but it's smarter. Um, Probably that means. No, I assume that has to do with trickle the, the game in. games to the yeah, uh, console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because one of the problems you get today is uh, you preload a game, it's 90 gigabytes or something, and then mm. the game, you know, you preload it, and then the game comes out, and you've got like a 46 oh, gigabyte so download annoying. to do before. Yeah. yeah, so I, I actually have no idea what smart does. I think the Xbox <laughs> is actually a tool to teach patience to teenagers. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I run into this very occasionally on mobile where, I, I, and again, normal people would never do this, but I'll go to the App Store, I'll click like update all the apps, then I go out to the home screen and I start tapping on an icon and it actually won't let me launch the app because it's updating. Mm -hmm. yeah. this. Yeah. And it's like it, it briefly appears and it goes away. Anyway, so. so annoying. Um, yeah, uh, Xbox is definitely... A problem today with these massive updates. So I assume smart delivery is related to that, but I actually don't know. Uh, okay. Stopper. Yeah. Well, exciting. Yeah, sorry. Xbox yeah. One gets another, <laughs> even more exciting dashboard update. <gasps> yeah. Woo -woo. 
<laughs> this one is not that exciting, actually. So I'm on the Insider program, so I guess I've been using this one for a few months now. So I've I kind of was dealing with this a little while ago, but I think I've. Uh, I think I've spoken in the past about the weirdness of how slow the Xbox console user interface always is. This is this was a problem on the Xbox 360. They never really fixed it on the Xbox One. And every time they do a dashboard update, virtually every time, they, they will mention something about performance updates and they try to make it faster and they're trying to lower the latency of this and that and everything. And then eventually what they get to is we actually can't make it faster. So what we're going to do is we're going to make there be fewer steps to go do something. So if you want to launch a game, it's like right there now. You don't have to go to a different screen because loading that screen takes a long time. So technically, I guess it's faster. I don't, I don't know what that means exactly, but it, uh, it's not that different. They got rid of the tabs. I don't know. <laughs> I just... You know what it is? It's like the start menu or the home screen icons on a phone. You, you don't really think about this yeah. stuff a lot. You, mm. I'm not there to look at the UI. There I'm to there to Call launch the game. Yeah. 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 Yep. So I, I see it briefly. I don't really care about it that much. So the uh, there's a leap year. So Saturday is still February, but Sunday is March 1st. Yeah. That means it's time for new games with yeah. gold. And they'll probably be available any day now, the first couple. This is actually a really good month. So Castlevania 2 on the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One, and then the entire Telltale Batman series, The Enemy Within. Um, is available on Xbox One starting, what do you say, Sunday, Monday? March Sunday. 1st, Sunday, yeah. yeah. And then there's another, as usual, a couple more after uh, the 15th. Yeah, it's, all, it's, it's hard to keep track of this stuff now because in addition to games with gold, of course, we also have the Game Pass stuff, and this Game Pass on Xbox and on PC, and they do those drops twice a month. Well, actually, they do them throughout the month, but they announce them twice a month, so... You know, if you're if you're paying to be in the Microsoft, uh, the Xbox ecosystem, I mean, you're you're drowning in games. Now. Like it's yeah, it's it's yeah. kind of ridiculous. It's yeah. funny. Yeah. Uh, according to Londog, Microsoft describes smart delivery as a technology that allows you to buy a game once and know that whether you are playing it on the Xbox One or the Xbox Series X, you're getting the right version of that game <laughs> on whatever Xbox you're playing on. All right. All right. So I'm delighted to know that even me knowing nothing about it didn't help know what it was. So, um, yeah, obviously you're going to get the version. I mean, okay. get the version that goes with the hardware you own. This reminds me of uh, Mary Jo and I before the show were talking about that piece feature of um of this duo and she was saying is this even like a feature what is this like and I, and you know cynically it's like well we we have this notion of you turn the device on and of course the screen comes on then you can interact with it but this thing has two screens so now it's a new feature and it's like i have different versions of the xbox so if i download it i'm going to get the version for my console right yeah, of course. <laughs> like, obviously. That's not even obvious. that smart. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously. But I mean, yeah, okay. But that's how it is. <laughs> I mean, how smart is it to have to be? Like, oh, no, we're going to put the iOS <laughs> version on your Xbox. <laughs> Guys, get the, get this. Wait, when you download the game, you actually get the version for the thing you're downloading it on. Oh, what? my God. <laughs> wow. Oh, and that no, and, and 12 teraflops? <laughs> wow. Thank you, Microsoft. You're amazing. <laughs> xCloud? Are you playing xCloud? Are you doing the beta? No. no. You know why? Because, oh, actually, I don't have any. Oh, I'll tell you why. So um, it initially was only available on Android, and I only have Android phones, and I find the screen to be too small. Now it's available on iOS, but it's really limited, which means I could play it on an iPad, which is a big enough screen. But because of Apple's licensing policies for, through the store, Microsoft can't offer the full suite of games <sighs> Don't. only off one game oh so if you like halo <laughs> you could do that okay if you don't like halo or you just want a, some variety you can't pretty much today have to do it on android obviously over time they're going to expand this will be on pc yeah, so i don't really want to play on my phone the no i can't yeah i can't see it um can anybody can anybody play paul no, it's still in preview, so you can sign up to say you want to be on it. Microsoft is letting more and more people in over time. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I I don't know how big that audience is, but it is uh, still in preview. How are the reports? Are people uh, saying it's good, low latency, <laughs> works great, yep. all that? Yeah, no, people are actually really impressed by how, how well nice. it works. Now, I'm not using it over a mobile network, obviously, because, you know, no. I like money. But yeah. Um, but, yeah, over Wi-Fi, it seems like it works great. And it's... 
it basically seems like very similar in quality or I'll say in performance to Xbox game streaming where you actually have a console where the game is on the box and you're streaming it over your Wi-Fi network to a different device. And obviously there's a little bit of latency and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it's actually surprisingly good. Good. I just can't see the text. Yes. Um, let's do uh, the back of the book. We're going to start off with the tip of the week from Mr. PT. I have a lot of stuff this week. Oh, good. Um, yeah. So this, I have a tip, I have a game pick and an app pick. So for the tip, um, Firefox and Opera both made news this week because they really either released a new version of the browser or announced this new feature, which is this notion of secure DNS. And so if you're familiar with uh, the domain naming system, you know that it translates IP addresses into friendly URLs, right? That's, or I guess vice versa. That's how that works, right? And so we have these HTTPS uh, encrypted websites. Most websites now are moving to the system and all soon will be, but DNS itself is not encrypted. So you are potentially could fall for like a man in the middle type attack, or you could have a compromised DNS server where they're stealing your browser history or whatever it is. And so browser makers are starting to enable this secure DNS where everything is encrypted. Firefox is starting to roll it out in the U.S., Opera just released a new version of their browser that supports it. Both most browser makers have said they will support it, uh, and all and Chrome and all the Chromium-based browsers support it right now uh, through the Flag system. Which, if you're familiar with that, you know Chrome colon slash slash Flags search for secure DNS, you'll find the option. You can turn it on. But if you're using the new Microsoft Edge, which you should be if you're a Microsoft guy, um, you can do that same thing in Edge today if you would like as well. So same thing, Edge colon slash slash Flags search for uh, secure DNS, and you'll find that flag. You can enable it, restart the browser. So Microsoft's calling it secure DNS. Yeah, let me make sure. They shouldn't be, it. because it's not, it's H, It's D-O-H. It's uh, DNS so over they're HTTP using the, S. They're using the language that's in Chromium. It's not Microsoft that's doing that, but it huh. is. Let me just... Firefox it calls it uh, D-O-H, DNS over HTTPS. They're calling it... So the, flag, the feature flag is called secure DNS lookups, Oh, what this what this okay, is? Okay, so there is, is a, there is a thing called secure DNS. That's not what this is. This is secure DNS. So that, that no, but sneeze. no, but that's micro, not your fault. That's Microsoft. They shouldn't be. No, no, I didn't. I, maybe I just didn't say it correctly. I'm sorry. So it's it's the feature is called DNS over HTTPS, yes. which is D O H. D O H. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's by default it's on in Firefox, and you don't even have to use this command, you know, flag. That's thing. right. That's right. It's right at the bottom but, under networking. But now this was the big announcement that Firefox is going to turn it on, and you have two choices right now: Next DNS and Cloudflare. And I asked Steve Gibson about it. He says I'm perfectly happy with either Cloud. So the issue is your IS. If you don't use it, your ISP sees every single lookup you do, which means they basically see every site you go to, and they they often sell that information. If you encrypt it. Uh, the ISP can't see it, but whoever's at the other end, whatever DNS server you're going to, can. Cloudflare has been very clear that they are not going to record it or see it or use it or sell it. Um, they're doing this uh, because it helps them with their bandwidth shaping service, which they do charge a lot of money for, but they're not actually using the information. So, and the next DNS, I think, has pretty much the same uh, promise. Okay. So I turn it on. I think it's a good thing. I had never even heard of this <laughs> until this past week. So yeah. I thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah. It's, um, um, it's something uh, we've been talking about on security now. The only reason no, that makes sense. Yeah. Because when you think about the web and HTTPS, you're like, well, this is encrypted. Everything's fine. It's like, well, hold on a second. You know, there's, there's a whole thing that happens between you and there. Yeah. And that's the, the thing that yeah. this is trying you to do. You type in, uh, you know, therat.com. Right. And you oh, all kinds of malware is coming down to computer, <laughs> your system. This has nothing to do with that. Your system mm -hmm. then needs to figure out, well, what's the IP address for that? And we'll query right. the DNS servers going through your ISP first. You know, first they look in a local cache, but most of the time it goes to the ISP's DNS server. That's your canonical DNS server. And mm -hmm. the ISPs record that information. And some ISPs, many, I think, use that yeah. information. So by going through DOH, you no longer are visible to the... It could conceivably slow it down a little bit. It depends on how right. how well configured your but... ISP's DNS servers are. A lot of them are very slow. Steve also has, if you want, a, a DNS benchmark tool you can try and see. Yeah. So good. I think that's a good feature. I didn't know that was an Edge. So Firefox, yeah. Opera, and Edge now. And all the Chromium stuff. You can enable it through flags. Nice. Yeah. 
Game of the week. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I don't usually do a game of the week per se, but this is a big week. So uh, I'm fascinated by this, but apparently 14 years ago, these amateur developers got together on the side and were, were making an unofficial port of the original Half-Life game to what was at that time the Half-Life 2 rendering engine, right? Because it's an incredible difference in quality. Um, over time, this thing has evolved. They, they tried different rendering engines. I think they moved off of it for a while. They kind of moved back for various reasons. They're using a... Um, it's, it's kind of a, a, a tweaked or specialized version of that engine now, but... The cool thing about this is, aside from the fact that they kept going on it, um, Valve has okayed it. <laughs> like, they're going to let them sell the game. And it is going to be on Steam next week. It's called Black Mesa. And it is a it, it is the original Half-Life, but completely done over to be gorgeous and modern looking. Um, so well, I just I bought it. I want to play this. I, I loved it. Yeah, that. I know. Oh, I'm going to play this thing game. through. I can't wait. Like, the original Half-Life is a, a certifiable classic. Oh, it's amazing. So good. Yeah. And I guess they changed, you know, if you're familiar with this game, it gets weird at the end. You go to the alien planet, and it's it's kind of strange. And I guess they changed a bunch of that uh, as well. But, you know, the the iconic be beginning of the game, for oh, example, where looks. you're on that train going in. Yeah, it's... Oh. I cannot wait to see this. I'm really, really excited about this. What engine are they using? Do you know? So it's whatever the Half-Life 2 engine was called, oh, okay. but it's heavily modified. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But even today, if you bring up Half-Life 2 today... That game looks fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole atmosphere, the just something about it, it's just amazing. Really, this, really neat. This is really cool. Yeah. Um, and then for the app pick of the week, Stardock, which um, aside from the, some of the games they make, has pretty much made a career out of you know fixing holes in Windows. Um, has created or yeah, has created something called Sound Packager 10 for Windows 10. And what this is is a modern kind of Windows 10 settings-like interface for the sound schemes that have been built into Windows since, I don't even remember when, the 1990s, certainly. Certainly Windows 95, but possibly earlier than that. If you, you know, you could do this today. If you uh, right-click on the volume icon in your um, tray and choose sounds, what will come up is that old-fashioned sound control panel. And it's you can see that Windows still supports sound schemes it only has one. It's like the default scheme where you could have no sounds. And that's it. And even though Windows has theming support still and sound scheme support still, like Microsoft does nothing with this. So this application brings a bunch of, it brings a modern interface to it for one thing. Allows you to download and browse through different sound schemes on the web. <laughs> it used to be a big thing, right? You know, you'd change yeah. your sounds. In fact, for a while, well, remember theming, the plus packs. Yeah, right? the plus packs, you'd get a whole new yeah. theme, including new sounds. That's right. So the, the plus packs would have like graphics, they would have different icons, they would have different cursors, and they would have different sounds. And actually, it's, probably screensavers. It feels right? kind of so, old fashioned. It mm. does, but you know, it's, it, but also, like, if, if you check out this tool, it's kind of cool because some of these sound schemes are kind of more modern sounding. Yeah. Um, the sound scheme in Windows has kind of been unchanged, well, mostly unchanged for a long time. Yeah. Um, it's only $5. I mean, you can chart, you can uh, try it for 30 days for free to see if you want it. And if you're an object uh, desktop um, subscriber or customer, you just now get that as part of that tool as well. So it's just a, it's just one of those things like you, you kind of see this, you're like, wait, isn't this in Windows? And mm -hmm. like, no, it's not. And not only, well, it is, but it's like the old fashioned thing. And they just, they stopped you know they don't even support it anymore it's just sitting there doing nothing so it's, it's pretty cool um pretty cool pretty pretty cool pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> i think it's time to give mary joe the floor for <clears throat> enterprise pick of the week Yes, this is a cool pick also as data center cooling is very key to how the cloud works How's that for a segue? No. Okay. Um, my enterprise pick is Microsoft is going to open some new Azure regions in places where they haven't been before. Spain and Mexico. Um, I wish we knew more about this. We don't know when they're going to open either one or where in those countries they're going to open them. And they aren't saying at this point. What we do know is those new data regions and data centers will be serving up Azure, Office 365, and uh, 
power, the, all the whole power platform and Dynamics 365. So yeah, um, more cloud, more places. Microsoft's still growing their cloud, even though they, as I wrote about last year, they've had some cloud availability constraints here in the U.S. for people who've been having problems, especially on the East Coast, getting capacity in Azure. But as Jason Zander said to me last year, Mary Jo, we are always adding capacity. And here is proof. They are adding more capacity. We are always adding capacity. That's what I, I kept saying. So when are you going to add capacity? Always. Mary Jo, we're always adding capacity. We are always. Okay. We're building. But where? <laughs> <laughs> I like Mexico and Spain. Yeah, Mexico and Spain is good. Typically what you do is you look for somewhere where power is cheap, right? And where you're trying to forge more customer partnerships. Right. Like if you look at why they did this in both places, they announced big deals either with the government or with, in Spain's case, Telefonica, which is one of the biggest telecommunications partners there. So I'm sure it was Microsoft and Telefonica in a room saying, Telefonica saying, you want us to make Azure our preferred cloud, but you know, we need a data center over here. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, I yep. actually, <laughs> thanks to GDPR and Russia and China and everybody, I yep. think every country is going to have its own... <laughs> I know Microsoft great, cloud great. server. <laughs> it's not. It's not far fetched. No, right? <laughs> it's not at all far fetched. We should talk about this next week. We should. Yes. Yes. Enterprise pick of the week numero dos. Yes. Yes. So if you anybody who's been paying attention to Microsoft lately has noticed they've been really spinning up their PR machine around migration. Been talking about cloud migrations and app migrations, and now they're talking about file migrations. The way they're talking about this is through a new tool that they're making available to Office 365 and Microsoft 365 customers, business customers, I should say. Um, last year, Microsoft bought two cloud file migration companies that had almost the exact same name. They bought a company called Mover and they bought a company called Mover. And those are two different companies. Right now they're taking the mover technology and they're making it available to uh, business customers who want to take their files from other cloud providers like Google and Amazon and also other cloud storage companies like Box and Dropbox and Ignite. And they want to move them into Microsoft services more easily. So if you are an existing customer for Microsoft 365, you will just be able to start using this for free. If you somehow want to use this tool to move to a non-Microsoft cloud, which I guess is an option the way the tool works, it will not be free, surprisingly. Freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Huh. Me and I've heard that somewhere. I don't know where, Joe but McGee. I have. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I think we need some beer. Me too. Yes. This week in New York is Craft Beer Week. We have the New York City Craft Beer Week every February. Oh man, it's so just many beers. Screw up my trip. Yep. Yes, it is. So many beers, so little time. There's just not enough time to drink all of these. Uh, but I did get to drink one from Equilibrium. Equilibrium is a new brewery in New York. It's in Middletown, New York. And the story I've heard is it was uh, opened by a bunch of former chemists. Oh, God. And it makes... Right. <laughs> That's actually good because beer is... I'm the chemistry. one who brews. <laughs> I'm sorry. <Yes>. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so this beer from them that I had is called Super Fractal Kuru Set. Oh, yeah. Def a mathematician, Jeez. at least. Yeah. Yes. It's not called empirical. <laughs> I know. Well, they have they have um, MC Squared as one of their beers. They have a lot of names that are uh, I know. connected their, their to beers their beers. Look really cool. Energy wave. They're really cool. Relativity yep. wavelength. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty interesting. Yeah. So this one, um, I didn't know what most of these words were in the name of the beer, but Koru is a New Zealand spiral shape that constantly evolves to symbolize new life and growth. Oh, that's neat. And it represents a fractal set. What? Resembles a fractal set, they say. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean in terms of beer? This is a triple IPA, but it's made only with New Zealand hops. Huh. And so it doesn't taste like what you we think of as a typical IPA or a triple IPA. It tastes a lot more like a Sauvignon Blanc to me. Like you can taste the grape flavor uh. kind of. And one of the types of hops is called Nelson Sauvin hop. 
um, which is very closely aligned with Sauvignon Blanc. Hmm. Um, so yeah, if you're somebody who's like, yeah, I like IPAs, not that much, but I would like one if it tasted like wine. I would like might- one if it didn't taste like an IPA. <laughs> <laughs> this might be something you would give a shot. <laughs> it's like wine. Oh, man. It's All of the benefit of IPA with none of the taste. It's citrusy, I'm going to guess. It's <laughs> Also a little bit lime yeah. flavored. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also a little like white grape. It's weird. It, it, you can kind of taste all of those things going on. So if you want to try it, look for Equilibrium Super Fractal Kuru Set or look for any IPA that's made with um, New Zealand hops. You'll get something somewhere yeah, with that. Interesting. Wow, that sounds delicious. Man, I'm kind of yeah. jealous. I want to go to Craft Week. <laughs> Craft Beer Week? Yeah, yeah, there's so many activities. Sounds like fun. And you get nice weather too. It's a little springy in New York. 50s. <clears throat> well, okay. It's not bad. But <laughs> it's our winter, it's but yeah, it's not New York <laughs> winter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mary Jo's going to be with us in St. Louis, not for the meetup. And once again, that meetup is uh, a week from today. It'll be Wednesday night at the train wreck. There's two train wrecks. I don't know which Just one it is. Look for the train wreck. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. The train wreck saloon at 7.30 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, March 4th. Uh, that's open to the public. Uh, I, you know, I don't, it's, it's the one near our hotel. That's all I know. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't know which one it is. I'll figure that out. Uh, there's a blog post. Maybe it says there and then, uh, twit.tv slash blog. And then, uh, the next day, if you're a WWT customer, ask your rep, if you're going to be in the St. Louis area on March 5th, because, uh, we've got a great panel with Mary Jo Foley and me and, Alex Lindsay and uh, Mike Dorosh from uh, Gartner Group. It should be really interesting talking about the future of the cloud. And uh, that will be a lot of fun. There's a cocktail party immediately after. So, Mary Jo, I'll see you in St. Louis. I will see you there. That'll be fun. Micah Sargent will be filling yep. in next week again. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but after that, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Actually, I probably <laughs> am. They've got to... <laughs> got me scheduled up for all sorts of things. Thanks, Paul Therot, Therot.com, T H U R R O double good.com. And he is also at leanpub.com for his books, including the Field Guide to Windows 10, updated constantly. Mary Jo Foley is at allaboutmicrosoft.com, her ZDNet blog. And uh, we will uh, come back and do this again. I won't be here, but uh, Mary Jo and Paul will be next Wednesday at 10 a, or sorry, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 1800 UTC. So come by. Say hi. Join the fun. Windows Weekly. You can listen live or watch live at twit.tv slash live. On-demand versions of the show after the recording session come up a couple hours later at twit.tv slash ww. They're also on YouTube. You can also find them um, in your favorite podcast app. All you got to do is subscribe to Windows Weekly. You'll get it automatically. Why wouldn't you do that? We'll meet you in St. Louis, Mary Jo. Yeah, okay. See, <laughs> See you all next week <laughs> on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye.